This video is brought to you by Dev Mountain, a coding bootcamp that offers in-person and online courses in a variety of subjects, including web development, iOS development, user experience design, software quality assurance, and Salesforce development. For more information, consult the link in the description below. This video, we're going to be continuing on with the previous series of videos, and specifically, we're going to be looking at ways that we can take the helper methods in the class that we wrote in the very the most recent video. We're going to be looking at how we can apply that to each of the URLs that we parse from this links file. So if you recall, we have this text file here, which contains YouTube URLs for each of the videos that we want to process, namely get the link to the video, description, title, and all that. We're going to be processing that file, and we want to use those helper functions to um, extract the ID, and then go ahead and use the URL that we formed here from this query that's going to interface with the YouTube Data API and obtain the information that we're after. So really the first thing that we want to do is we want to find some way of actually looping through this test links file and extracting each of those and kind of processing them in a way that makes sense. So I'm just going to go ahead and comment this content out here because it was really just here for illustrative purposes. We're going to bring this back when we actually run it on the links themselves, but I'm just going to kind of leave that there for now. So the first step that we want to do is we want to open up this links file, read through each of those lines, and then kind of remove like the new lines and the commas because those aren't actually part of the URL that we want to uh, you know, process and visit. So the way that we can do that is just by using this very simple with statement. First I'm going to say link file, I'm going to define a variable name for the actual name of the link file, which in this case is test underscore links.csv. So that's just the name of this file here, which is residing in the same directory as this Python script. Otherwise, you'd have to specify the directory. And then what I want to do is I want to open that file up. So I'm going to say with open link file. I want to specify that I'm going to read the file, and I'll refer to the file inside of this with statement as uh, the variable f. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read everything into the file or read everything into a variable, I should say, called content. I'm going to say content is equal to f.read lines, and this is just going to store all of the lines of the file into a, uh, a list where each line is an entry of this list. So let's just go ahead and print out content. So I'll write that, I'll clear the terminal, and then I'll say Python, uh, Python YouTube downloader. And we can see here that I believe one of the problems here is I think I did not pluralize this, so this should be read lines instead of read line. So I go ahead and try that again, and now we actually have a list that contains each of the entries in that link file that we saw before. So we can see that there's a few things that we don't want in the query that we're going to form to the YouTube Data API. Namely, each of the entries have this new line carriage return, so we want to strip that away. And then also, the way in which this file is formatted is every URL has a comma after it. So we want to get rid of both those things. Now, there's a number of ways you can do that. This way probably isn't the most, um, let's say, efficient or straightforward, but I think it's more explicit. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it this way. First thing is I want to get rid of those new lines in each of the entries in that list. So I'm going to redefine content. I'm going to say content is equal to list, map, and then I'm going to, inside of this create a lambda function, where I'm uh, essentially applying a map to each of the entries in the list, defining that in terms of a lambda function, where I'm going to say s.strip. So that's going to essentially apply the strip function to each of the components of this list. And that is really just going to remove that new line character. Uh, and I want to apply that to the content list. So this is going to redefine that in terms of this map lambda expression, convert it to a list, and then store it in this content variable, which we're redefining. We can do a very similar thing to get rid of the commas. So the only thing that we change here is now we want to strip commas out of each of those components. So I know that I can do this because the IDs for each of the URLs, uh, they're never going to contain a comma as a special character. So for instance, if we go to these links, we see that they can contain uh, alphabetic characters. So uh, anything from A to Z, uppercase to lowercase, they can contain uh, numbers. So that is, um, you know, anything from zero to nine. They can contain some other characters like underscores or dashes, but they're not ever going to contain commas. So I can safely strip out commas from this uh, URL, and it's not going to affect the ID itself. So that's what I'm doing there. I'm just stripping away the commas. There's a couple other ways you can do this. You can strip away the last component of the item, uh, but this is just maybe more of a uh, explicit way 
of doing that. Not the only way on the planet, of course. So once we've done that, let's just go ahead and print out the updated content. We can see now we have a list where the new line is gone and also the comment, the, sorry, the comma is gone out of each of these entries in the list, which is what we're after. So that's good. So that's what we're after. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this because we don't need that anymore. I'm going to define a variable called helper equal to helper, which is the uh, name of the class that we defined in the previous video. We're going to make use of this eventually, but I'm just going to define that here for now so we can actually make use of it like we did here, where we you know, converted the URL or the ID from the URL. We converted the title uh, to contain underscores, got rid of any special characters. We're going to make use of that soon. So after this, what I want to do is I want to actually uh, loop through all of the elements in the content list that we've created. So each of those elements in that list contain a unique YouTube URL, and I want to loop through them. So I'm going to say for YouTube URL in content, let's go ahead and print out the YouTube URL so we can actually verify that it's going to print those out. So we can see here that the for loop went through each of those in the contents list, content list, and it printed those out on the screen, which is what we see there which is good. So what we're going to do now, now that we've got our sanity check done, is we want to go ahead and do a couple things. So instead of printing out the URL itself, let's go ahead and try to grab that ID. And the way we can do that is we can just say video ID is equal to helper dot ID from URL and we can feed it in the, the YouTube URL because remember this class that we defined above we have this function that we defined in the helper class which takes a YouTube URL and then it splits it where it takes the content after the last slash and it gives that uh, in this case the ID to us and it, we're going to store that in a variable so just printing that out just to kind of give another sanity check here we'll go ahead and see that we oops we'll go ahead and see that we actually do get the uh, IDs of each of the respective videos, which is what we're after, because we want to form this query for the uh, the URL that we're going to form to the YouTube Data API. Okay, so now that we've got that, let's go ahead and formulate that query. And in order to do that, I'm going to take this variable that we defined before. I'm going to paste it in here. I'm going to get rid of that comment, and I'm going to indent it. So right now, what I've got is I've got this URL which is a variable that I've formulated here. We've got the base URL to form the query to the YouTube data API. And then we've got the video ID, which is again, something that we're extracting from the YouTube URL that we're looping over. And then the API key, which is gonna be uh, static because that, that the API key is not gonna change for our application. So we formulated our URL. And what we want to do now is we want to go ahead and uh, kind of extract the title and description. So I'm gonna kind of make a placeholder here. I'm gonna say, YouTube or YT underscore stats is equal to YouTube, let's call it YouTube stats URL. This is a class that we've yet to write. Uh, this is going to be a class that's going to be responsible for dealing with the query that we formulated, processing that JSON, and then essentially allowing us to extract the title and description in this case. So I'm just going to imagine that we have these functions already, ri already written. So I'm going to say that title is equal to uh, YouTube underscore stats dot get video title. This is a function that I will intend to write once we actually get to the class of this function. Um, and then what I want to do is once I've extracted the title from this, basically what I expect from this function, from this class function, is it's going to give me the actual title of the YouTube video. And again, we have this helper function which takes that title, which could contain a number of different characters. It could be various cases. We want to take that title and convert it to something that's just separated by underscores and removes any of those extra variables. So what I would do then is I'll say title is equal to helper dot title to underscore. And then I'll go ahead and feed it the title. So for instance, title might be something like this where we saw uh, you know this thing here. This might be one of the titles. In fact, it is one of the titles on my video or something very similar to it. And what we will expect is title will be set equal to that because it's going to take it directly from the video itself. And then it's going to convert it based on the helper method that we wrote in the last video. So why don't we just go ahead and start writing that YouTube class because I think it's going to be a little bit easier to see once we've actually defined this class. So I'm going to go up here after this helper class, I'm going to define another class which we will call YouTube Stats. So, what we're going to do is I'm just going to define a constructor. It's going to take self 
and let's also give it a URL. So it's also going to take in a URL which is a string. Now what this is going to do is it's actually going to take in this URL and uh, retrieve the JSON that is responsible for this particular URL request. And if you recall from the initial video or the second video, we had essentially this content here, which is, let's see, I don't know if we actually had it anywhere. So we did construct the URL, but what we want to do, I think we did have it in the previous video, but I may have removed it. What we want to do is we want to load it in, or request it, I should say. We're going to use the URL lib request uh, module. We're going to request that specific URL. We're going to read it in as a uh, JSON file, and then we're going to have that essentially as a dictionary object in Python that we're going to be able to parse and extract content from. Let me just go ahead and write this out. I think it's going to be a little bit easier to see once that's all written out in plain sight. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to define a class variable, which I'll call self.json URL. This is the URL where the JSON is actually going to be living, the result of us making our query to the YouTube data API. So this is going to be equal to URL lib dot request dot url open so this is essentially opening up uh, essentially a session performing a git request for a given url what url do we want to give it well it's the one that we're going to be feeding into this class where we construct a class object from this class and then what we want to do is we want to create the data which is going to be the dictionary object in python that's going to be responsible uh, or it's, it's going to be constructed once we load it in and treat it as json so we'll say self.data is equal to json.loads, self.json URL, and then we're going to fat pass in, or we should say .read. So what we're doing here is we're reading in the content from that URL that we defined up above, and then we're loading that in, treating that as JSON, again using the method that we, the module that we imported here, and we're storing the result of that into a variable called data. So a lot going on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and I'll probably comment this out for now. Uh, or actually what I'll do is I will keep this for now and let's go ahead and try this out so instead of doing the title for now I'm just going to create this variable and I want to just see what this what this actually does so I'm going to create kind of a dummy function inside of the YouTube stats class which is just let's just call it print data it's going to take self because it's class method and then all this is going to do is it's going to print out self data so all it does we give this a URL and then we just call the method YouTube stats dot stats dot print data so we're just going to construct an object for this class on every iteration of this loop then we're going to print out the data which is the JSON that's returned from the YouTube data analytics API and we're going to print the result of that out just so we can get a sense of what we're working with here so let's go ahead and run this right now write that clear the terminal and then we'll say Python, Python YouTube Downloader. We see a lot of content that just spit out here. And essentially these are the results, or I should say the dictionary objects that correspond to each of the uh, queries that we make using the YouTube data API. So this is the end of one, this is the beginning of another. So this is the beginning of one of the queries. We scroll the way down. This is just one big query for the last video in that, in that link list that we have. And we see here that this is, uh, initiated by a curly brace, which in Python is corresponding to a dictionary in Python. What we want to do is we want to drill down enough so that we can actually extract, in this case, the title, which we can see is this uh, Python and TensorFlow text classification part one. And I also want to grab the description, which is mostly the remainder of it. And I want to store the description in a text file, and I want to use the title to kind of be the name of both the video file and the name of the description file that we write. So now that we have at least the data, instead of just printing out the data, I want to actually get the video title. So I'm going to uncomment this placeholder function that we had from before, and I'm going to go ahead and fill this in. And what we need to fill this in is we need to drill down in that dictionary data structure and actually obtain where the video data structure is. So I'm going to create this function called get video title, take self because it's a class parameter, and I'm just going to return the item that I'm looking for in that data that we printed out. So I'm going to re return self.data of items. So that's the first part. I want to return just the first part of that. And then inside of that is a, a snippet. If you drill down more, 
there's the title. So let me just go ahead and do an explanation mark here so I can kind of see what we're working with here. So if I scroll up a little bit to the first, or I should say the last query, we can see that snippet here. So what I've done is item is just kind of the uh, you know first component of this query that we're given. We, we drill down into the zeroth entry of that, which since we're looping through every single item in this list is going to be the zeroth entry. So here's items. I want the zeroth entry of that, which in this case is this. So I'm asking for the zeroth entry of the key items. Drilling down further, I want snippet. And then drilling down further, I want inside of that title. Now it's all a bit scrunched together. There's a way that you can print this out in a more pretty way to actually see the JSON structure. It's all kind of condensed now. It's a little bit hard to, to parse that. It's a little bit hard to read that. Um, there's ways that you can format the output of this in a nicer way. And actually, indeed, if you just go to the URL like we did in the previous video, you can see the structure of the JSON is very hierarchical and you can see how you would actually extract the content that you're after. So I've kind of already done that work. This is how you would do that in this case. Items, the zeroth element of that is going to give you that component and then snippet and then title. That's going to give us the title. In a very similar way, we can almost just write verbatim the same function but for the description. So we're going to replace title with description. And instead of title here, it's the same drill down procedure, but in this case, the key that we're after, we go to the, I'm just gonna go back to the output again. So we saw that the title was one of the things that we we're after. I'm just gonna keep scrolling up here. The title was the one of the things that we we're after. And then in the same uh, hierarchy, we have another one, another key in that level called description. And that's what we're going to be after there. So we have two functions now, which given a specific JSON query, will allow for us to obtain the title and description of a given video. So let's just make sure that it actually works. So back down here, we're going to get the title, and then we're going to format the title as we did for our helper function. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the description. So the description, we can just say description is equal to, let's just say description is equal to yt underscore stats dot get video description and let's just just to kind of do a bit of a sanity check let's go ahead and print out the title it's going to be a little bit less output than printing out the title and the description so I'll say write and then I'll just uh, let's clear the terminal so we get some space here run this again see what we get let's go up here okay so what do we got so it looks like we have the titles notice that all the titles are properly formatted in that they're separated by underscores any characters like colons or dashes are all removed and they're all processed very nicely. So that's it for this video. In the last video of this series we're going to kind of wrap this up. We're going to deal with downloading the video file and also writing a text file that's going to contain the description that we just downloaded as well. Print that out to verify that it actually works too. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions let me know. Uh, the code will be available on my GitHub and I'll see you in the next video.